In this lesson, you will learn how to get data from Excel and use it to type it in applications with Softomotive Win Automation. I got some data here in an Excel sheet and we can see that we have 10 rows and each of the rows got a first name, a last name, a gender, a state and an active. We want to fill this data in for each of the rows in this CRM demo app. So the first name goes to the first name, the last name here and then the gender, we get that's radio buttons. The state, that's a drop down, you see it here. And then finally, active, yes or no, that's this tick box, uh, checkbox here. So untick or tick. First thing is that we need to read the Excel sheet into Win Automation from Softomotive. So we close down this Excel sheet and we go here and create a new process. We could call this read Excel type CRM. And we will click enter. First thing is that we need to launch Excel. So go to the Excel activities or you can search for it, then launch Excel. We will drag this guy in and we will open up our document. I placed mine on the desktop and you need to point it wherever you placed yours. So that's right here on the desktop. Then we'll click open. Make instance visible. That's not uh, good here because then we'll just, we don't need to see the operations and it will just take time. So uncheck that. We can see that we store our Excel variable into the Excel instance variable. That's fine. Then go to advanced. We choose to open as read only as we are not writing anything to this Excel sheet. And then we can have multiple robots running. Imagine that this was a larger, much larger workflow with maybe 100,000 rows, then this will be nice. So click OK. Then we want to find out in, let me open the Excel sheet again. We want to find out when we're iterating through each of the rows, we want to find out where the first free row is. And that is this one, because then we know to how, when to stop. And of course, also the first free column, that's here. Actually, we want to stop one column before and one row before, as this is the last one. Go to Win Automation again, and we get the first free column row from Excel sheet. So we see here that this is the Excel instance. That's the variable that we got from up here. So we are reading there and then we are printing. The, we store the first free column into the first free column variable and the first free row into a first free row variable. Fine. Now we want to read uh, this uh, Excel worksheet because now we know where to stop. So we drag this read from Excel worksheet in. You can see that we read from Excel instance. That's fine. And then we choose this drop down here, but we want to read from a range. We want to start in column one and row one. Where do we want to end? Well, we just found out where we want to end it. We want to end it one row and one column before our first free column. So what we do here is that we choose the variable here. First here for the column, that's the first free column here. But remember that we wanted to uh, end one row before. So we just say minus one here and we do the equal thing for the row. So click this one, first free row. And then in here we write minus one. We see that we store this thing into Excel data. Then we go to advanced. We want to tell it that first line of range contains column names. You can see it here that we got a header column names row. So far so good. Then click OK. Now we can iterate through it with a for each. So we could either go up here or in the loops. That's here for each, drag this guy in. We want to loop through, through Excel data, so that's uh, that's fine. And we can see that we store our current item, that's the row, into current item, like this. Now we can get our first, um, so we, we got it for each row, so we can get the first thing out, that's the first name. And what we'll do here is that we want to populate text into our CRM app. So we find a populate text, we'll show you how it works, populate text field in window. We drag it in here in this for each. Then we need to select a control and that's where we want to type the data in. So click select control from repository, add a control here. And now we can see that we can select all these things. And what we want to select is the first uh, name here, the field here. So control and then click your mouse. Then we selected this one. What do we want to fill in? Well, we want to fill in the current item. That was the row that we're working in. So go here. Then we say current item here. But now we need to specify what column we want to work with. And we want to work with the column name first or the first column. We can do this in two ways. We could either have these um, square brackets here, like 
this and then if because it was the first uh, column we could type in zero because this is zero index so the first column is zero then the second is one two three and so but what i like to do is i want to specify the name since we often move these columns around and we rarely change the name so what i can do here is that we can just say quotation marks first and then this so now we put in the the first name then we click ok we can actually run our workflow now, but let me find a display message a message box here because we don't want to see 10 items fill in. We will just see one. And this is a good thing to break up. I'll show you why. And we'll just leave it empty. So this is an empty message box. We can now close down the Excel sheet and then we can run it. So let's do that. We run it. And first we will launch Excel and then we will read from uh, the thing and we will fill it in our uh, Siri map. We can see here, Emma, that was our first name, so that works. Now we need to change the last name, this is not Madisax, but we got a message box here, so we don't need to loop through all 10 items. We can do that in the end if you want it. So let us uh, close this one. And we need to have another populate text field. That was the last name, so populate text field in window here and again we will select the control from the repository add control and this is the last name so control and then click like this what do we want to fill in that's the current item and i think you know the drill because we will just need to have these square brackets then quotation marks and then last quotation marks and a square bracket like this then we click ok so now we got these two things. We'll just say that it worked. We'll test it in a bit. And now we want the gender. And we want to ask if the gender is male or female. Because we want to, if it's male, we want to click here. Or if it's female, we want to click here. So we need an if. We have this if here. Drag it in. So if, and then the current item, square brackets, and then gender like this and square bracket in. If gender is equal male, then we want to do something and else we want to do something else. Let's find the else as well. So so if, like here, so if uh, the current item, uh, the gender of the current item is male, then we want to click the radio button. So what we'll do here is that we will say select radio button here in window that is here. Now we just need to select the control, so we'll add this control, and that's this one, so control, and click your mouse. Done. So we can see here that we uh, selected the male, or we will select the female, that goes into the else, so we'll just drag in another select radio button, we'll select the control, we will add the control, control, and then click. Then we'll click OK. So now we sorted the gender thing, then let us, uh, we got a state yeah, to fill in from the Excel sheet here, and we got this um, active or not. Let us fill in the active or not, because there's a built-in trap in the state, I will show you. But uh, let's find out how we can um, ask. So we need to ask if it's active or not, because we need to untick it if it's not active. So that will be another if. We will drag this if in here. So now we want to ask, is the current item... And then we want to ask, is um, the current item active? So uh, that is um, square brackets, quotation mark, active, like this, square bracket end. Is this equal to yes? Then we want to check the checkbox, and else we want to uh, not have it checked. So we need to find an else. If it's yes, then we want to do something. And what do we want to do? We want to set checkbox. So we want to set, let us find it here. Set checkbox state in window. We need to have one here. And what do we want to set? We want to set, let me um, add a control. So we want to set this one here. So control, click. If this is the active is yes, then we want to have it checked. And we can click OK. 
we'll drag in another one that's for the else and we want to have that unchecked of course but we need to select it again and now we can see that we can have it here because we are just uh, made it so we'll just uh, choose it from our repository we'll click add and now we will say unchecked because that is if it's not yes in the active so then we click ok now we sorted all this we will um, we could test it now to see that it actually works, but let us um, add the last thing that we needed, that's the state. And there's a built-in trap here, because the state, we can try to uh, set our drop-down here, because what we'll do here is that we'll have a set drop-down list. This is actually a good case. I chose the radio buttons, checkboxes and drop down. So you can see a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If we select the control and add the control, that's this state here, the combo box, control, left click. This will usually work. What do we want to do here? We want to select options. And we want to put in, oh, let me click here, the current item. And then we want to um, square brackets, state, and then we will end it like this and then we'll click OK. The problem is, you'll see it, we will run it now. We will wait a few seconds, now we can see that we run, we will start to fill in the things in our CRM and the thing is that it doesn't actually uh, get the um, thing here. We can try to maybe just choose a state because we only have a, we can choose one more. You can see it now. It will we only got two states: New York and Texas. And you can see that it actually it tries to change to Texas, but it gets back to this, and this doesn't work. And maybe we don't know what to do. So what we'll do here is that then this is message box is good because we can just stop here. We don't need to iterate through each of the other rows so we'll just stop our process so what we'll do here is that we'll delete this and then we'll use the recorder the recorder is very fine when you are in doubt about anything so I'll show it here and I'll drag it in what we'll need to do to the recorder is just click click things and then we can click finish so first thing is that we need to click here then click a random state just choose whatever you want now we can see it over here and we can click finish so we got it in here. First thing is that we need to move it into the loop. Then we're here. And then we can see that it added some um, get window and get window. So maybe we would use that. And we can see that it's still set drop down list value. And it actually did the same thing as we did. So we just need to change this option name with our state. So the Q and item here. And this one will be again in square brackets and we can choose state and then end then we will click OK and now we should be done so let us go to the CRM app we can see here that it's uh, still UT so let us move all over we will start it and now we will read from our Excel sheet in a few seconds we read now and now we will start to type into our CRM app here McKenna female and now we can see that we will change the state in a bit it will uh, need to now we can see that we actually change it to new york and we change the active let's see that we also can now we can change the state but let's see that we also can uncheck this checkbox i think it's in row three so we'll just click ok and it will iterate through our next row so mail the state we can see it's a bit slow that's okay it works now and but usually it will just work now we can see texas and it's still active now we will see, a, if I remember correctly, this one will not be active. So we will see here that it actually, um, we move our state and that's New York. And we can see that it unticked the active. So our flow works. We can choose to run some more, but this is sufficient. In this lesson, you learned how to get data from Excel and type it in applications.